What exactly makes a tune spooky? And I'm not talking about horror movie score, but instead, classic Halloween camp. In terms of arrangement and instrumentation, you could add organ, harpsichord, theremin, or really whatever you want, if it works contextually. But what about harmony? This is also a pretty open-ended question, since you could really do whatever you want. But generally, I found there are four harmonic identities of these campy Halloween tunes. I only want to really focus on the last one, since I find it the most interesting, but I'll still briefly go over the first three. Keep in mind, tunes often have multiple harmonic identities, and in my experience, spooky Halloween tunes especially like going between different harmonic colors. But anyways. The first on our list is harmonic minor, which can be found in a wide range of tunes, from Bach's iconic Toccata and Fugue in D minor, to Billie Eilish's Bury a Friend. In general, harmonic minor tends to give a more classical styled, darker, spooky feel when compared to the others. The second is Dorian. Dorian is interesting since, while a minor mode is less bright than minor, which I found works surprisingly well for more upbeat Halloween bangers. Notable instances of spooky Dorian tunes are Michael Jackson's Thriller and the first part of Castlevania's Vampire Killer. This third harmonic identity doesn't really have a name as far as I'm aware, but I kind of just think of it as the one minor, flat six minor thing. This one has a large overlap with harmonic minor, but has a darker, more film score-y flavor. If you also grew up watching Cartoon Network in the early mid-2000s, you fondly remember Scary Godmother, which uses this harmonic movement in its theme. However, I think a more well-known example is Kidnap the Sandy Claws from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Let's take a quick listen. Really interesting sound. However, this has been talked about elsewhere, and I really want to focus on the next harmonic identity. But before we talk about this, let's talk scales. I think I've briefly mentioned modes in a previous video, but if not, I'll quickly explain. Modes are simply inversions of the scale. If we start the major scale on the second scale degree, for instance, that gives us the Dorian mode, which I mentioned earlier. This, in essence, is just the natural minor scale with a funky natural six scale degree. We can also derive modes from scales other than the major scale. If we take the fourth mode of the aforementioned harmonic minor scale, we end up with Dorian sharp four, which, as the name implies, is Dorian with a sharp four scale degree. This scale also has roots in Romanian, Jewish, and Ukrainian music. Something interesting about this scale is that both one minor and two major are diatonic, and moving between them gives a very intriguing sound which can be attributed to the sharp four scale degree. When used in a spooky context, it works particularly well. Before we take a look at tunes that do this, I want to also talk about the similar Lydian diminished scale. This scale is similar to Dorian sharp four, only differing with the raised seventh. Rather than deriving from any mode, this scale comes from George Russell's Lydian chromatic concept. An entire episode could be dedicated to this topic, so I won't go into too much detail, but essentially, other than giving us the cinematic harmonic major scale, this scale and its modes are otherwise relatively uncommon. But due to this scale's similarity to Dorian sharp 4, it does occasionally appear as a spicier variation of it, but we'll get to that later. First, let's take a look at Eric Satie's Nocion No. 1.
Here, we can clearly see the melody outline the notes of Lydian Diminished, especially in this measure. Disappointingly, however, the harmony doesn't necessarily support the true Lydian Diminished sound, since most of the chords are just diatonic to natural minor. Also, this middle part drops the sharp 4 and goes back to boring natural minor for a few measures. Either way, this wonky melody gives this tune a haunting, black and white Halloweenish sound. I saw someone say this tune evokes the image of vampires dancing in a ballroom in the late 19th century, and I couldn't agree more. But let's now take a look at a tune that properly harmonically supports the Lydian diminished sound, the castle theme from Super Mario World. From an arranging standpoint, this tune is neat in that it takes the major athletic theme from the earlier levels and reframes it in Lydian Diminished to underscore the higher stakes castle level. Let's look at the harmony. Immediately, we see our chord progression goes from 1 minor to 2 major and then repeats the cycle. An important thing to note is that our 2 major is not the secondary dominant 5 of 5 because it doesn't sound like it wants to resolve to 5. In an appropriately modal fashion, our 2 major sounds like it wants to resolve back down to 1 which it does. This is the quintessential Lydian diminished slash Dorian sharp 4 sound. Melodically, while we do hit the natural 6, we never hit any of the other defining notes. With the harmony, we can say with certainty we're either in Dorian sharp 4 or Lydian diminished, but not which one specifically. Either way, it's hip. For a non-video game example, let's take a look at one of my favorites in a tune I've wanted to talk about for a while. The Psytrance classic Bliss on Mushrooms by Infected Mushroom and Bliss. There is a cool build halfway into the tune that captures the essence of the Lydian diminished slash Dorian sharp 4 sound, but since it lasts for around 2 minutes, I'll just play the latter half of it. Let's check it out. While appearing deceptively complex, this section is really just a 1 minor 2 major movement, which modulates up a whole step after each figure. My friend who showed me this tune actually recommended this for my constant structure video, and while this isn't exactly true constant structure, in a kind of meta sense it is. But without straying too off topic, let's talk about the chords. It's just the basic arpeggiated 1 minor triad, followed by the arpeggiated 2 major triad, with a passing tone at the top. It really is a concentrated, boiled down essence of the spooky Halloween Lydian diminished sound. Since it keeps the same structure between the two measures, we hear it as modulating up a whole step each time it repeats, which builds both suspense and acts like a very slow electronic riser. For our final example, we're going to look at the most appropriately spooky Halloween tune involving a skeleton. Spooky scary skeleton. Just kidding, it's Bone Trousel, Papyrus's battle theme from Undertale. Quite a few weird things are happening here, detuning aside. I would argue the fast chord progression, which clearly outlines the sharp 4, acts as a more horizontal harmonic color, rather than having clear harmonic functionality at every vertical slice, especially with the pedal point C always in the bottom. Let's take a look at the melody. It very satisfyingly starts in a clear C minor, then gives us both the B and F sharp in a short amount of time, clearly defining the true Lydian diminished sound. In the next phrase, however, we switch off of the B natural and hit the B flat, then A, which squarely puts us in Dorian sharp 4. This interplay between the two similar but subtly different scales gives us a very inquisitive and almost sarcastic sound, 
fitting for a gay talking skeleton. Overall, keep in mind the one minor to two major sound, Lady and Diminished and Dorian Sharp 4. While having a cool sound that works very well for the Halloween aesthetic, doesn't necessarily have to be used in this context. As I mentioned previously, Dorian Sharp 4 is found in a lot of Eastern European folk music, and a minor Sharp 4 flat 5 sound is the backbone of blues music. Normally, I would have a joke planned for the end of the video, but to be honest, I banged this entire thing out in one day, and I need to wrap this up so I can head to a Halloween party. So if you'll excuse me, 